All right, guys, so it all starts out with a bucket and some water. We're going to be making a soda ash and water mixture. A lot of people don't know what soda ash is, but soda ash is kind of like primer for tie dyeing a shirt. It gets the white shirt more prone to. I guess the dye, it allows it to come out brighter and it makes the whole process smoother. So you just prepare by adding some soda ash into some water. It doesn't really matter how much you put as long as the water isn't too white. Then put the white shirt and just let it soak for around 10 minutes. Um, the longer you put it, the longer and better the dye will last into the shirt and it's pretty self-explanatory. So just gonna let that sit for 10 minutes. We never go in the jail cause all I when it comes to dye, it's pretty simple. You don't need to um, go out and buy the best dye ever. As long as the dye has some color and pigment to it, you should be fine. You simply just add water. I prefer hot water. It allows the powder to um, dissolve better. So you go ahead and you just, you know, dance around. Just like chill out for a bit while you got all your dye and set and everything. So here's what you're going to need to get this Done, you're going to need some gloves they sell these at Home Depot anything like that you also can just use the ones that come with the tie-dye set you're also gonna need some rubber bands and it will do they also probably come with the tie-dye set take out so what we make out I'm so sure I'm Jake of course you're gonna need your dye you can use no brand dye like I used you can use tulip dye whatever you want to use you're also gonna need some uh, cellophane wrap or that clear stuff you know what I'm talking about and um, yeah that's just gonna help us um, do everything later so we're gonna squeeze out the soda ash mixture from our shirts you don't want the shirt to be too damp because then it's going to allow the dye to spread around the shirt and it's going to cause the colors to become different and that's not good so make sure you allow your shirt to dry for a couple minutes Fork method is the best way to get the most precise swirl. You place the fork wherever you want your swirl to start. So I did a classic swirl here in the middle of the shirt and I'm just doing a nice tight swirl around the whole shirt with the fork. I don't want to sit beside them and take up all your time. All your time. But when I'm without you, I feel like I've been paralyzed. So I'm taking the rubber bands and I'm putting them in all different parts of the shirt. People think that the more rubber bands you use, the more accurate or better your shirt will be. And it's not necessarily like that. Um, the bands are just to help it like stay together and just to um, divide your sections for colors. So it doesn't matter where you put or place the rubber bands. So now it's time to dye the shirt. I did two shirts as you can see here. It's pretty simple. Um, all I did was I used the same bucket that I used the soda ash mixture in. I put my gloves on because trust me guys, this dye does stay on your hands for a couple days. So it's, I think it's just an option to put these gloves on, but I think it's a good, <laughs> I think it's a good idea. So to dye my shirt, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Make sure that you put the dye in different sections and make sure that they're equal sections to just to get the best results, honestly. I did the three classic colors here and I think that looks really good. Um, another good thing to know is that the most abundance of your dye should be towards the end of your shirt. That way, the dye will sink into the middle and it's also just better to have more dye um, towards the end than the middle. Now we're just going to finish this up by wrapping the shirt up with some cellophane and we're going to let that sit overnight.
Yeah, paradise, yeah, yeah. It's somewhere that I've never been before.